So uh, one last video after I said the last one was the last one. This is a continuation of my React Native series. Uh, I showed you how to add and add all these items into this list using the camera. But what I didn't show you was how to delete the item. And someone kind of mentioned it to me in my comments, hey, how do you delete these items? So I was trying, I was gonna just put a little button here, but I thought, hey, let's try and do something more interesting. And in the process of trying to do something more interesting, I came across uh, some software to give us a nice swipe approach. Um, and it's part of this uh, React Native gesture handler. Uh, so I played around with it a bit before I um, started to create the video. And so this is for you to see what I've done. Um, what I have here, just a basic group of list items, and then I give you the ability to kind of swipe the item and see the delete button over there. Also, it has the ability to kind of close the item when you open up another one. And then of course, when you actually click the delete, it deletes it and the list gets updated appropriately. So this was just done in a simple snack, which I'll put the link to the snack below. But now the challenge is taking this code here that I created and putting it into this application over here. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Um, hopefully it's something that you enjoy. If you haven't checked out the rest of the series, please check it out. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And um, let's now get to the code. Okay, let's get started with adding the UI. Um, <clears throat> as I said, we're going to be using a, a library called Swipe, not a library, but a component called Swipeable. So let's just import that. Go up to the top here and add that. And the idea is, since we're using a flat list, and the flat list has this render item function, and inside this render item function is where you actually render the row item. This is the row item. This is what we're going to wrap with this swipeable. Um, as I've said earlier, and as I do in a bunch of my videos, especially when there's a bunch of code, instead of watching you type, I just kind of cut and paste it in there and just kind of explain to you what's going on. So let's just start right with the swipe and get passed to it. So right up at the top here, we're gonna make our row a swipeable row. So we're gonna wrap it with the swipeable component. Of course, gonna throw some errors because everything isn't straight yet, but we'll work through it all. So the first thing is this render right actions function. So this basically says, what do I show when you render the right action? That's going to be swiping to the right. And what we, we have a function called render right view, which we'll put in. And this render right view will draw what needs to be drawn when the person slides to the right. This close row, this is a function that gets called so that every time you open it, actually, I think I can show you on my sample that I kind of built this on. So the closed row manages this. So how when I open that and then I open that, it knows to close the other row. So that's what that closed row function manages and we'll handle that. And then what this is doing is this is getting me a ref for this component. And then what I'm doing is I'm keeping a track of keeping track of all these refs so it can give me access to the row so I can manipulate the row. I need the I need the references to the row to be able to close open and close them. The open right values defines how far across the swipeable item can be swiped open. So that's what we got right here. So let's start filling out some of these functions that they're going to complain about. And let's start with this render right view first because that's what we want to be able to see um, when we show the other side. So let's get some of that code going. And we'll go up here. Uh, render right view since render right views only called from render item. Um, well, do we want to put it in here? Yeah, we'll put it right inside the same render item function. Okay, so what render right, oh. what render right view does, as I said, it shows in the right view, this on delete handle, this is what's called when you click on this delete button that's inside of the view. inside the view. Let's kind of move this a little bit. Okay, so that's what the delete handler is. So that's the render right view. And as I said, here's the button. When you click it, the button is called to actually delete the item. All right, so 
that's what we got there. Let's talk about this closed row. The closed row is a function that closes the rows when appropriate. And so let's copy and drop that. We'll drop that outside of this component because it might get called by somebody else. So we'll put it up here. And this is the index of row, index of row. So it checks whether or not it should open to close the row, and then if so, then it closes the previously open row, and then it keeps track of the previously open row. So you can get that behavior that we're looking for. That's what close row does. So you can see I need a couple of variables here. I need this row array, and I also need this previous row value. So let's um, get those guys. And so we'll just add them here for managing opening and closing the array. Opening and closing the index items. Okay, so we got those in place. Then the next thing we need to do is, so we, this, so where'd this on delete come? No, that's on delete. Yes, where's on delete coming from? Where's all this stuff coming from? So let's see where we're gonna pass those in. So we're gonna have to pass some stuff into my, um, where did it go? In the right view, swipeable. Close row pre. Oh, I put this stuff in the wrong place. This stuff we want outside of my render item function. And let's move this up to the top of the application. I'm sorry, of this uh, home screen component. So let's put that down here. All right. So now we we'll, let's get back to our render item function. And as I said, we we need to pass some stuff into it. And actually, render item isn't really a good name for it. We want to change this to something that makes more sense because if you look down here, where is my flat list? This render item, this is actually, we want it to render a row item. So we're gonna call this render row item. We're gonna rename it. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, because we've got to do a few other things. So let's push this off and let's go like this. So now what this is going to do is we're going to pass this value for here. So we're going to pass the value into the row, which is uh, we definitely because we definitely want the uh, render row sorry render row item to be able to get access to the row. But then the other thing that we need to do is we have this delete function, right? And we're going to pass it as an anonymous function. And this is the function that gets called when the person actually deletes. And excuse me. So let's close that out, and then let's close that out. Oh, did I already do that? Yeah, we already got that. So when the person actually is gonna delete something, we, we, there's a couple of things we need to do. Put them in and then we'll, once again, we'll discuss them. All right, so my render item function that's getting past the flat list is gonna call render row item which um, we have up above. And it's gonna pass the item, which is this V for value. And then it's also passing a call, an anonymous callback function. And this is what gets called when the user deletes the item. And we need, we need to add these functions, but basically this is what, I'm gonna delete the item and I'm gonna pass the item that needs to be deleted. And this is gonna be in our super base service. Um, if we don't, if we get an error back, then we wanna close the row that you clicked on and we wanna display what the error is. So that's what's going on here. So now let's go fix our render row item function to take this callback. So let's go up to render row item. Let's find that. Oh, I didn't change the name. So let's go up here and change this name. This, so render row item. So it gets passed in an item. And then we also need the index to keep track of things. But then on here is our delete function. It's the last thing getting passed in that I just spoke about. So we need to add that on the end there. And we're going to call this, this is going to be our on delete function. Okay. So now you can see how everything works. So we get an item pass. So we get this value passed in, and that value has an item and it has an index. And then we're also getting this on delete function passed in. And then what we do with this on delete function, we go down here, you can see that this is the function I'm passing to this render right view which then comes into my render right view as my on delete handler, which then gets called when a user clicks delete. So that's, that's kind of how that all fits together.
Right, so now let's go back and make sure. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, well, let's let's move this out of the way because it's complaining about some stuff. So like my render row item. Where is that down here? It's saying this guy needs to be async. Let's make that async. So now we get some stuff drawing. All right, so let's see what do we got. So there's you see how there's a button. We're getting a button showing up. Let's see if our close row is working, and now it's closing the row. So it closes the row. All right, so we got our UI straight. Now let's get our delete item data function working, and we're going to get that guy from our super base. Let's go up here, and let's do another thing. I imported, I have a couple imports, so if we look at our um, DE item, I thought I just had that. Let's get this out of there. All right, delete item data. You see it's also calling this alert on error. So let's add alert up to the top here to our React Native imports. And then down here in our super base, let's add our delete item data. And then now let's go into our super base service and actually add our delete item. So we have our read item and so let's go down here at the end of our read item and let's do export. Actually, like I said, I have these functions written already, so let's just drop them in and explain them. So delete item data. All right, let's walk through what's happening here. This is the item to delete. So I get my item. I have to do two things. I need to delete the item from the... Um, row in a SQL table, and then I need to delete the item from the super base storage. So two steps. All right, so let's walk through this first one. In R1, R2, we have two different responses. So go to my item table, delete an item, where the ID is equal to the item ID that got passed in, and the owner is the current user. You can only delete your own stuff. And we don't need to log out the errors. But if if Superbase is successful in deleting the row, it will give you back the object that got deleted. If this data is empty, then that means I got an error. So I return from my function and I pass the error. If there's any other error, then I return that error. Return from my function and pass back the error. Otherwise, everything's good, so then now I come down here and try to delete the image. And I know the name of my image bucket. I The image key has the image bucket name with the file name on the end, so I split it. And I just take the second part, which is the file name that I want to delete. I get my response. If there's an error, I return the error. Otherwise, I assume everything's fine and delete was successful and I return null. So that's my delete item function. So I think I have everything in place. Let's see if we can get something to delete. So the first part is let's see who I am. So I am a at mail.com. So that means I can only delete this one and this one. I should not be able to delete this. So let's try and delete this. You cannot delete this record. Awesome. Now let's see if I can actually delete this one. All right, it deleted it, but I'm getting this React update error, which I'm not gonna really worry about right now, because the important thing is to show that I'm deleting my records. Let me kind of force a refresh so you can see that the record's really gone. So my data's refreshed and it's still there. Let's delete my next one. Item is deleted and everything good. So like I said, this was a short video. These are the things I wanted to cover. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, I will post the source code for my little sample here. I'll post a link to this um, snack so you can check out all the code on uh, how to kind of add this to your own application. Thank you. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. See you later. Bye.